Speech is silver and silence is golden. So today it is very interesting remedy, silver, and approved by Dr. Honeyman himself. And skip to the slide. Uh, Argentum Metallicum, prover Dr. Honeyman. And it was proved in the year 1845 with low potencies and a new <clears throat> and almost nine provers. And clinical observation were done uh, by Clark and the planets are Saturn and Moon. So we'll start with Nimal in fourth. On my honor, I swear that I shall practice the teachings of homeopathy perform my duty, render justice to my patients, and help the sick whosoever comes to me for treatment. May the teachings of Master Honeyman inspire me, and may I have the strength for fulfillment of my mission. This is the Honeyman in Oath you should read daily. And now we'll start with the case of Argentum Metallicum. Now this case taught me the essence of metals, which is performance and the defense. All the cases which I have taken are verbatim, as what the patient says. And I used to write it down, these cases, uh, which are cured and verified in my practice which I am doing for almost 20 years from now. And I have just typed this in my PPTs. And there were no computers when we started our practice in a very small clinic. And recently I started upgrading my practice and started doing my work in my computer. And there was as such no need to give proof to anyone because we were very satisfied from the result of our patients who were so loyal in their treatment. So this case was a very interesting case. It taught the essence of metals, the performance and the defense. So this was a case of a man aged uh, 35 years of age and he was from a very high profile company having a pain of sciatica pain and this pain was extending to the limb and which was better by moving or walking now this is important modality what he said and he was better by ascending stairs so he asked the first question that was tell me about your complaint I had this complaint since many years. It is better by moving about and worse on resting or when I am sleeping. So tell me about your job. So the job which I am doing is very challenging job. That's very important of the case. The challenging job is to handle people and I am HR at that company. And I asked further, describe me in this detail. So it is a job where I have to need to have a lot of patience and endurance to handle people at the workplace. And he said a lot of endurance is required and a lot of patience to handle people at my job. And the job is very challenging. And you have to be with them, take out the work and the targets of the company that has to be achieved. 
and if the worker goes on the strike you are the responsible so he said if the workers go for the strike and we are the responsible for what the things are and so we have to handle both the things one at the side of workers as well as the management part so he was doing a job which was very challenging and where he has to perform very well in order to take work from the workers and and to balance the expectation of the management so i ask so how do we do that so we have to very alert for workers demand you know what they demand we we have to very alert and the and what are the wants of management also so that was the two thing that they have to handle and that was a very big thing for him so what goes on in your mind and feeling when you are working so feeling is to do good work for the workers as well as get work from them and to balance them with the management so he was in between part balancing the workers as well as the management part a very important portfolio what he was doing so what is the need from your side to do good so he said uh, he needs lot of control on ourselves for example if we shout or beat anyone uh, the workers would complain the union office so this was very important for him to be balanced and he if he beat or say some shout shouting he does and he had to face the problem with union office and and if he is not doing getting the work out and he would be getting a negative marking by the management that was very important portfolio which he was handling and this workplace and this was the real essence of the case which i have explained you in short uh, so tell me about your pain when is your pain more so it is when i see my situation at the company office going out of the control the pain starts for that i have to walk and i have to do a lot of work so walking and doing lot of work is the essence of silver and the column eleven which i'll explain you within few minutes what is the essence of column eleven and the element silver right so now now what is the most inner feeling of yours during that situation at the office the most inner feeling in my mind at that time is to have to perform well and to keep both parties happy one side worker and another side management that was very important for him to manage both the side the worker and the management and to need one side of the workers need as well as not to put any negative mark as there is no work from the management so management used to push as well as workers need so this is the essence of the case the essence of silver that is i will be appreciated only if i perform in order to appreciate it and of success i must keep up the standard in every creative venture or performance the silver essence and this is very very important now the dreams what do you dream do you get i dream of my work and daily duty which i have to do it daily what do you like in the food and drink i like to have coffee that makes me okay and all kinds of sweets so two desire which came up of the coffee uh, which is a stimulant for him and lots of sweets to desire that we get in this case and the repetition was done and i'd like to show you the repetition so this are the repetition done extremities sciatica now extremities pain sciatica now pain sciatica now ascending emulsion pain sciatica now motion emulsion food drink sweet desire food think of it is that 
dream business of occupation, dream business of occupation of that day. So we have this remedy, Arjuna Metallica, wonderful remedy. This remedy was given in the potency 200 again, and in five cup method. As well, we followed 15 days, and we got a good result in the fatigue pain and the feeling of control. And the effects were much better after 15 days, and after 30 days of follow up, much better in sciatica pain, and the feeling was much better. And the same person got changed as the miracle of our silver metal, our single metal. So this is totally cured case. Believe me, sciatica pain is not there, and it has done wonderful. So we'll start with the revision of periodic table. And the revision is this is the first alkali metal which are most reactive. Then we have alkali metal earth, and these are the transition the metalloids, the noble gases, and the halogen. This is noble, the eight, the halogen. Uh, and we go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are the outer shell that we have in the periodic table. So these are the one columns, 18 columns. And here we are. The periods are the rows, the groups are the columns. These are the columns that we have in our periodic table. And then there are marking of one, two, three, four. This is the first column. Second column is 2A from 3 to this 30 zincum. Uh, the a, a part is not there. 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, and 8A methods. It is important to know about the periodic table. So that's why I highlighted. Um, group 1 is, as you know, alkali metal. Group 2 is alkali earth metal. And we'll go for 17 is halogen, and 18 is noble gas. Now, this Mendeleev's table was done in the olden times. Now it is a modern table since 1923. Uh, first it was done by Dobinia, tried, then the Newland Octave, then Mendeleev's table, then the modern table. This was the evolution of periodic table. Just I wanted to highlight, it's very important. This is how the atomic number is done, the number of photons present in an atom. It's very important again. Uh, mostly so the atomic number is more fundamental property than the atomic mass. This is very important again. So one photon is added, one electron. The beauty of the mineral kingdom when we are studying with periodic table is the balancing. One proton has to balance with the one electron. If the electron configuration is less, it has to balance with other electron and form the ionic bond or the covalent bond. Covalent bond has to be formed. These are the shells which I was speaking. One, two, three, four, and totally seven we have in the shell. This is the method to remember the periodic table from hydrogen to sodium to francium. And this is also how to remember the periodic table. Now we we'll come back to silver. So silver is a metallic chemical element with the symbol AG and the Latin word is Argentum from the Indo-European tool that is ARG which means the grey or a shining metal. The atomic number is 47 as you know it. It is soft and lustrous transition metal. It has the highest electric conductivity of any metal. The highest thermal conductivity of any metal. The metal occurs in pure and free form. And the most silver is produced by copper, gold, lead, and zinc refining. You'll see a very interesting video. Uh, I'd like to share it. So we have a video. Mm -hmm.
so we're here today and we, we've come back after hours because so our reaction's ready you know all we need again is a little bit of water just to start it off so we're here today and we, we've come back after hours because we need to use this room for a long period of time because we're going to do something quite exciting because um brady's brought another camera which you can see set up over there and we're going to use that second camera to capture one second of film every minute for maybe two or three hours and we're going to do some time lapse something i've seen on tv with like flowers opening or plants growing but never with chemistry developing silver is one of the few metallic elements that occurs naturally as the metal in nature occurs naturally in nature now this man is saying wonderful thing about the silver please concentrate what he's saying and it's really you learn a lot from this man so that if you're lucky you can wander around and find lamps of silver lying around on the ground and this is how in ancient times silver was discovered so it has been known for thousands if not tens of thousands of years gold is somewhat similar and also copper and but most other metals combine too easily with oxygen or other elements so you don't find them naturally so I thought what we do today is to do a competition reaction and that competition reaction is based on something called the reactivity series of metals so we're going to compare the reactivity of two metals it's a bit like a game of football we're going to give one of those metals the football and in this case it's another component or another salt component nitrate so the two metals that are going to be competing for the nitrate are silver mm. and copper and really these are related by something called the reactivity series one of these metals is going to win i know that and i hope we'll find it during this video silver had a particular use in photography and in the old days when people used photographic film it's very important use of photographic film the black color that you saw on developed negatives was is in fact silver a photographic film consists of a layer of silver bromide or sometimes silver iodide and when the light shines on it the light just starts a tiny amount of reaction to making silver and then when you put it in the developing solution the catalytic amount of silver that you've produced causes a big reaction and you make a large amount of um, silver and so you get this black color which then you can print as pictures so on the bench i've got a small beaker or, a, or an erlingmeyer flask as we call as we chemists call it which is full of deionized water so we've passed the water through a machine which has taken out all of the other ions so that they can't sort of play around with the competition reaction that we want to start today firstly i'm going to start off by giving the prize of the competition to silver so here i've got a a sample of silver nitrate it's sensitive to light so I can't leave it out in the bench very often so now what I want to do is I'm going to put some into the water to make a silver nitrate solution so I want to make sure there's plenty in there so that it's saturated now we've got to put in the, com the competitor so what we're going to do is we're going to take some copper copper metal and this is just a sample of wire which I've rubbed with some wire wool just to make it sort of nice and shiny and now what I'm going to do is dangle it in into the silver nitrate then it's going to start to compete for the nitrate and we'll see what happens so Brady started the recording and um, I think the best thing for us to do is to, to go away and do something a little bit more exciting and come back and have a look in an hour silver has become quite popular recently as a potential um, new way of making things um, antibacterial killing bacteria so now we're going to make some flash powder and um, the flash powder that we're going to make today is just a two component mixture it's very finely ground magnesium and the second component is um, it's ground silver nitrate solid okay so we take these two components and we mix the two together very intimately and Neil's just weighing the materials out right now so we're going to put the magnesium and the silver nitrate, the two powders, together into a small plastic container here. We're going to mix them 
very, very carefully. And then we're going to see what happens when we sort of initiate a chemical reaction. For hundreds of years, people have used silver spoons, partly, I think, because silver is quite easy to make, but also because the silver does have properties that kill bacteria. So a silver spoon is that less likely to get um, harmful bacteria on it than if you have one that's made out of wood or horn of a cow or something like that. So we're mixing these very carefully in the fume hood just in case the chemistry starts before we want it to. And in recent times people have started making very very fine particles of silver, so-called nanoparticles, which can exist in solution. So here I've got a solution of silver nanoparticles. You can see it doesn't look silver, it looks a bit yellow actually. And you can tell that it's got particles in it because if I can find a torch. So here we've got particles and you can see the particles better if we shine light through it. And if you look at the light you can see that there is a cone of light that looks rather like the headlights of a car in the fog. And this is an effect that is called the Tyndall cone, which indicates that they're very, very tiny particles suspended in the solution. So this is not solute silver dissolved in the water, but actually very tiny particles. So let's start the reaction just with a little bit of water. Wow. I think we should do it again though. Yeah. <laughs> People are now using these silver nanoparticles for all sorts of purposes. Here you can see that they've been put onto some sort of plastic. And you can now buy socks which have silver nanoparticles on them, which are claimed to kill the bacteria that make your feet smell. So we're going to repeat the, uh, the reaction. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to come out somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> Silver will conduct electricity. It will also conduct heat. If you've ever tried stirring tea with a silver spoon, it gets very hot. You tend to drop it. It also conducts electricity well. So we're going to repeat the reaction so that you can see it again, because that was really fast. This time we're going to do it on a glass dish so you can see it a bit better. And we'll pour out a small amount. <laughs> So our reaction's ready, you know all we need again is a little bit of water just to start it off. Catch that. I managed to close my eyes this time. During the Second World War, when the US government was involved in enriching uranium as part of the Manhattan Project, they needed an enormous amount of wire to make magnets. And so a huge amount of silver was uh, taken from the US Treasury where it was stored as silver to give value to the US dollar and was turned into wires to make magnets. And I believe that the silver was never returned, or at least it wasn't returned at the end of the war as was promised. Well, I've managed to fill maybe one minute's worth of time by now, maybe two because we've been away about two hours. So we're going to go back and have a look at the flask. It was a nice clear solution of silver nitrate with some copper wire, which was just immersed inside. So let's go and have a look. It is in our flask. So if you look carefully, you can see now that the copper wire itself is covered in very, very sharp crystals of silver which have basically become deposited on the surface. Copper has now won this chemical reaction. It's now going into solution. It's taking the salt element and precipitating solid silver crystals. So if you look carefully you can see that the colour of the solution has changed. It was colourless. Now it's blue which tells me that there's another iron copper in solution. So learned a lot and now we come back to the slides. Now very interestingly uh, now you know about the 
So here we have a sample of titanium wire. Titanium is a really quite fantastic metal. It's very, very lightweight and very, very strong. It's used in construction materials, very low concentrations, and as additives for alloys. The use of silver as a precious metal, microbiotic site, micro. You must be remembering about a silver side uh, key appointment for burns. So that was very important. Now we'll come back to the very interesting part of Honeyman's North America Fura. I'd like to show you the proving. So you see the proving. So this is just the skin. I'll share my slide. Yeah. Now you can see this is Honeyman's. Matria Medica Pura, the metal in its pure state, a leaf silver has supposed impossibly dissolved in our juices. And this is theoretically speculation said to be teachers of Matria Medica to be powerless as gold, which is very, very important. And you see it, it is used as diuretic pills. And now you go further and you will see the proving of Dr. Honeyman. And what do I go with Hello, complete sir. transient blindness? Hello? Sir, please, little bit louder. Little bit louder? Yeah, sure. Uh, see, we are uh, seeing Honeyman's Matria Medica Pura, where you can see what I go with complete but transient blindness. See, the spongy bleeding gums, which, however, were not painful, not solid. This I'm reading from Matra Medica Pura, the proving done by Dr. Honeyman. So how wonderfully it is done and we never read it. So we should read it in our lifetime. So this is very important. Those are in the bold marks are very important. Aching, tearing pain in the left and right temporal bone. Increase by touch. This is very important again. And this further we see in the proving. Now this is also very important. Gnawing itching in both the on the lobes of both ears in the morning after rising. Ye aap highlight kar dije in Honeyman's Matra Medica. Aise hum dimi dimi karke we can develop our own Matra Medica. Now very interesting again. The neck gland is swollen and consequence the neck is stiff and tense when moving. At the same time, swelling is rendered difficult by internal swelling of the throat and he must force every mouthful with effort to collect. This is 48 hours of the proving. Very important of animals proving. Now what we have is viscid grey gelatinous mucus which will be easily expected by hawking in the morning. This, this we have to do DD with brine and we have long, great longing for wine. This is very important again for Argentum case. Now very interesting again. Loud noise in the abdomen on the left side like the croaking of a young frog after the three to four hours. This is important of pura. Now again this is very important in diabetic case. Frequent urging to urinate and copious flow of urine for several hours after two hours of the proving. Very important again for Argentum metallicum. And now very important again. Excessive fluid coriza with frequent sneezing for two days. Severe fluid coriza without sneezing. This is also very important in the hay fever. Now very important again. On stooping mucus comes up into the wind fight which is expectorated by single impulse of the cup. DD, we should do DD with causticum because it is difficult to come out. So, Argentum metallicum, how to differentiate with causticum? So, Hanuman gives very clear about the expectoration. Right? These are all the proving. Now, this is also important shivering through the whole body. Now, what comes is very interesting mental symptom. Greater cheerfulness of disposition and inclination to speak all day. Very important. Right? 
tearing aching pain in the left temporal bone increased by touch motor medica pura of dr hanuman repeating this gnawing eating in the lobes of the ear this is also this comes for the second time also in the morning and after the neighborhood of maxillary gland is see in next so this is can loud noise in the abdomen on the left side like croaking in the young pop this comes second time again frequent urination copious urine for several time frequent doing coraza without sneezing stooping expectoration by single impulse of cough ye repeated ho rahe because it is very very important ye yaad rakhna aap paracetamol na likha chalo and then the shivering throughout the whole body great chest of disposition and inclination to speak all day this is important now i'll share my slide again this is my slide Hello. i will do a review yes, on row 1 Row one, row row one to row seven. Yes, row one to row seven. Come on, you. Okay, okay. Uh, just a moment. Yeah, it is audible now. Better audible. Yes, yes sir. sir. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and you see, uh, row one to row seven. It is very, very, very important. to understand the row wise uh, the row one is conception and existence it seems to be little theoretical theoretical but is very very important because we see lot of patient with this understanding when you are to solve many patient this understanding would make you much for pectin and exist on Beryllium, lithium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So, arrangement, security, and task. Row five that we have seen the case of our gentleman that is creativity and performance because they have to create and perform. Now, row seven is very important. The high sense of duty. responsibility with lot of destruction and disintegration almost 3 days back i had the case of uranium uranium natricum and is 